In this video, we will look at a few examples that will allow us to practice working with parallelograms. In example A, it says ABCD is a parallelogram. So let's start by drawing that. And remember, the letters always go in order around the parallelogram, or whatever shape it is. So if the measure of angle A equals 56 degrees, find the measure of the other three angles. So if angle A is 56 degrees, that means that angle C must also equal 56 degrees because in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. So the measure of angle C also equals 56 degrees. Now to find the other two angles, we should remember that consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary, and that's because they're really just same side interior angles. So because they're supplementary, that means they have to add to 180 degrees. So in order to find one of those angles and therefore both of them, we can do 180 minus 56 and get 124 degrees. So that means these other two angles, angle D and angle B, must each be 124 degrees. So the measure of angle B equals 124 degrees, and the measure of angle D also equals 124 degrees. So here are our three answers. Let's go to example B. Find the values of X and Y. All right, so this is marked as being a parallelogram, even though it doesn't say that, because we have these little arrows to tell us that these opposite sides are parallel, so it has to be a parallelogram. Because it's a parallelogram, that means that the opposite sides must actually be congruent. So this side, LM, is congruent to ON, and NM is congruent to OL. So we can set up two equations to solve for x and y. 6x minus 7 must equal 2x plus 9 because those two sides are opposite sides of a parallelogram. I can solve this equation in order to solve for x. 6x equals 2x plus 16. Minusing 2x gives me 4x equals 16, and therefore x equals 4. I can do the same thing to solve for y. So for y, I know that 12 equals y squared plus 3. I'm going to minus 3 from both sides and get 9 equals y squared. So there are actually two solutions to this equation. y could equal 3 or y could equal negative 3 because either of these two numbers, when you square them, will equal 9. However, if we think about the context of this problem, it doesn't really make sense for y to equal negative 3 because if we think over here, how could you have a length that would be negative? So I would say the answer is just y equals 3. So our two answers are x equals 4 or y equals 3, or and y equals 3. In example C, it says, show that the diagonals of f, g, h, j bisect each other. So the diagonals are the lines that connect opposite angles or opposite vertices. And to show that the diagonals bisect each other, what we should do is show that they have the same midpoint because that means that they meet in each other's middles and that they bisect each other. So we're going to find the midpoint of each diagonal. So the midpoint of FH, and then we'll find the midpoint of J. G. So to find the midpoint, we average the x-coordinates of the endpoints and then average the y-coordinates of the endpoints. So for fh, that would mean negative 4 plus 6 over 2 will give us our x-coordinate, and then our y-coordinate is going to be 5 plus negative 4 over 2. And when we simplify that, we get 1, 1 half. So if the midpoint of JG is also 1, 1 half, then we're in good shape. 
So for JG, the midpoint will be negative 1 plus 3 over 2 for the x coordinate, and negative 2 plus 3 over 2 for the y coordinate. And when you simplify that, you get 1, again, 1 half. So because they have the mid same midpoints, that means that those diagonals must bisect each other because at the midpoint, they've cut each other in half.